Hello everyone, it's the Velveteen Duck here. That which you just saw was basically a recreation of how this guy started. Let's just say it was a bit of a rocky start. Anyways, let's go ahead and get this going. It is the Defeat the Undefeatables event once again. And actually, before we begin, did you know that I just launched the DSO database? It's a searchable database stuffed full to the brim with equipment. So if you don't know what equipment is out there or what the stats are on a particular piece, this is a great starting point. The link to the database is in the description below. And as always, if this video helps you out, leave a like, subscribe, and share with your friends. To start this event, go to King's Hill and talk to Queen Antonia who is going to send you to purchase a Realm Path to the Circus Monstorum from Sabu. You'll have a choice of purchasing your Realm Path using Realm Fragments or Andermans. There's literally only one quest this entire event, so just prepare yourself for the grind. Entry to the Circus Monstorum will cost a different amount of Realm Paths depending on the difficulty level that you select, which will also scale the amount of progress and the quality of the loot that you receive. By the way, if you want to see how many runs you need to do to finish the event, Voltaru here has built a calculator that shows that. I'll put a link to that in the description below. While doing the event, if you have the Jewel of the Ingredient Hunter from the Glowing Cave, or the Jewel of Gem Fortune from the Summer Solstice Festival and Rising Hero events, make sure you equip them. These things are super overpowered in the event where all you do is farm bosses and these two items affect boss drops. Upon entry to the Circus Monstorum, you're going to see four shrines. Three of them will be shrouded in fog and one will be lit up. You'll have to click the one that's available and yeah, we'll summon a boss. Feed it and then you'll summon the next one. You'll repeat this until it's all done. Bosses are going to use their normal world skills in the Monstorum, not their parallel world variant. Event bosses are going to be identical to their event versions. The first shrine has two possible bosses, Herodur and Blood Mage. The second one has three possible ones, Megatina, Karabasa, and Arachna. And the third one can either be Asar or Barak. And the fourth and final one is either going to be Nefertari or Medusa. Within the Circus Monstorum, there are also four chesses. These chesses must be opened using the Keys of the Fearless, which can be obtained as event progress rewards or purchased from the shop for a ridiculous amount of Andermats. The quality of the chest and the number of keys required to open it will depend on the level that you play on. For example, normal mode just has wooden chesses, but if you go up one difficulty level to painful, then it changes into copper chesses. You can only open each chest once. These chests have a chance of dropping items such as the Adornment of the Vanquisher, the Executor of the Great Plague set, and the Complete Boss Pets. Once you're done with the circus, the portal will open to map 2. The boss that you get on the map is going to depend on the level of the players inside the circus. The higher the level, the more bosses there are available to you. There are up to 10 possible bosses with a second map, and if you've played previous editions of the Defeat the Undefeatables, you'll notice that Mortis has been removed as a possible boss. After defeating the bosses, chesses will spawn near the entranceway. The number of chesses you get will depend on the difficulty level that you chose to play on. You have a choice of the regular chests that cost one key of defeat to open, or the golden chest which requires 10. As far as I can tell, these two chests have the same possible item drops, but the golden chests have a slightly higher drop rate of the rare items. That said, uh, drop rate is a pretty nebulous thing to try and bet on, so you can just open whichever chest that you want. In addition to the chesses, you may notice that you get an entryway to a secret lair. The secret lairs of this event only have 8 platforms, which means you're going to be stopped by a protector with a force field at some point, but there's an extra shrine on the map that you can click. When clicked, that shrine will spawn a random Circus Monstorum boss. 
upon defeating it, you're going to get some clovers as well as the all-important event progress. As such, the secret lairs in this event are actually somewhat worth entering. Now back on the subject of the boss pets, which I touched on earlier, you're going to need a doll body part, which can either be purchased from Grima with Drakens or obtained as a random drop from the appropriate boss inside the Circus Monstorum. You'll also need some other parts, feathers of the griffin, newborn hearts, and flames of a phoenix. The feathers from the second map, uh, hearts from the second map, and flames from the first. Long story short, if you're playing the entire event, you'll have a chance to get all the parts and just buy anything that you're missing from Grima. Go to the workbench and you'll be able to assemble all the parts to form the pet that you need. So with all that said, good luck to everyone in the event. If you have any advice that wasn't mentioned in this video, leave it in the comments below. There are also four chesses located at four different corners. Wait a second. This is a circular arena. How are there corners? 